This week's been really awesome. It looks like our batteries are shot. So our prop is out and we are going to get a new one. We do not know when. It may be next week, it may be next month, um, but we just kind of have to wait for it. But meanwhile, we are going to kind of try to fill up our days with pro other projects. And just to explain exactly what happened here, so we've got the transmission. The transmission makes the coupling and the prop shaft, which are connected together, spin so that uh, the propeller spins and that makes us go forward or reverse or if we put her in neutral just to be in neutral the problem with our prop shaft is that the prop shaft was too short for this specific transmission the piece that holds the coupling and the prop shaft together was broken so all of those things need to be replaced so the coupling the piece that attaches that to the prop shaft and the prop shaft have to be replaced and we actually got it a little longer so that we could add a line cutter to it which helps let us loose of any line or nets that might get tied up on torque propeller so fantastic news we have our prop shaft oh my god i can't lift this oh this is the prop shaft it's very heavy um <laughs> and this is the coupling that we talked about so this is actually what's called a split coupling and these not this is where the prop shaft goes in and sits snugly and they are attached together in this little keyway and these two tighten up to make a nice tight seal so when this spins the prop shaft spins with it really nicely and that spins our propeller so I think we're going to get this installed today, which is amazing news. We thought that this was coming in a week. Actually, this morning we got a phone call that this was gonna come in next week. So we were we were preparing to be here for another week. So I'm very, very happy this all came in. And yeah, sometime today or tomorrow, it will get installed. Hey! Uh, and we're checking out the state of our um, AGM batteries. And unfortunately they are most of the way down. According to the voltage, there are about 10% left in them. This weekend, we discovered there's a bit of an issue with our battery system. We had a problem a few, uh, well, like a week ago when we were in a storm and during the storm, when we didn't have any sun and our solar panels weren't going, we realized that our batteries were getting very low. We talked to a few people in the yard uh, and they've told us that basically, it looks like our batteries are shot. The ones that came with the boat were sitting out for two years nobody was really taking a look at them or maintaining them basically they don't hold the charge anymore and uh, we're going to have to replace them the days that we've been here when it's been sunny uh, and nice i think the voltage is enough from the solar panels to really keep us going through the day and keep our refrigerator going through the night but whenever it is cloudy whenever we have a rainstorm we seem to just run out of battery we had a few choices uh, of how to go uh, and we decided to go with lithium so uh, we actually found a battery warehouse near Annapolis, near the boatyard. Uh, drove over there yesterday with the help of somebody from uh, somebody we made friends with here on the boatyard. Got the batteries, brought them back to the boat, uh, and now we have enough batteries to really uh, more than triple the amount of battery storage we should have on the boat. So each one that we got are from Relyon. This is uh, <laughs> this is one of them uh, over here. So it's about 100 uh, amp hours. Um, they're relatively heavy, but not as heavy as what an AGM, uh, an equivalent, um, I guess, lead acid battery would be. Uh, so we've got six, six of these. The plan is to install all six um, and then upgrade everything else along with our um, storage needs. So over here, we've got uh, six new batteries to go. Um, things to configure the new system. This is called the Serbo GX from Victron. It'll become the brains of our new uh, solar and battery system. Uh, got a new panel over here that'll display all the information from the Serbo, as well as just general things that we need to set this up correctly uh, on a boat. In our cockpit locker, we had four different batteries. These were all lead acid batteries. These were all flooded cell, and we had one additional battery, which was our starter battery. I'll put a little S here to represent that. So our starter battery um, is just in charge of starting up our engine um, and used to kick off the starting cycle for the engine, uh, whereas these four batteries were used to actually power the boat. Over here have our engine, and our starter battery 
is connected to our engine directly. So this is the positive side of the starter battery connected to the engine. Um, and so it can start the engine whenever it needs to. Um, each one of the uh, house batteries on their positive terminals, which are these over here, are also connected to each other and they're connected to each other in parallel. So since they're connected in parallel, this means that they have the same voltage across each one of them, but they combine together to basically be a larger battery. So um, if we take the output of this and we send this over to our, I'll put this red block here, I'll connect that over to here. This means that the, at least the positive side of these batteries are all connected into our house um, bus. Uh, and this powers all of our electronics. And just for completeness sake, all of these are also connected to the negative side. So in a circuit, you have to connect, um, you have to complete the circuit. So the negative sides of these are all connected together. And these are all connected to the bus. And these all go over to uh, our house electronics, um, which is connected to these two buses. And you know, there's, there's various wires coming up this from the bus to different electronics and different circuits, uh, as well as a negative side as well. So this line over here, um, coming off of this is for our starter. Uh, it's also a line coming off of this for our alternator. Uh, so the alternator is something that the engine uses to basically, um, as the engine ru is running, it charges batteries. All right, it uses some uh, the magnetic field uh, to generate electricity, and that goes back into your battery. So as your engine is running, basically in your car, it's how your engine, your car battery stays charged up while your car is running. So in our old system, we also had uh, something called an ACR. So the ACR sat here, uh, and it, what it does is it says um, if the starter battery is uh, full, right? So if this voltage is at the level that indicates that it's full, then it'll take the output of that and it'll send that over to these batteries as well. So basically uh, it connects all of these guys up so that um, if the ACR detects that the alternator is sending power to the starter battery, the starter battery is now full, the ACR says, okay, let's open up this um, circuit here. Sorry, let's close the circuit here so that all of these get charged as well as the starter battery. And of course, uh, I missed it here, but the starter is also connected to the negative bus. So this was basically our setup. We had the four house batteries, we had the starter. Um, all of these were the same battery, which was a flooded cell battery. And uh, in our new system, um, well, the issue we had is that all of these basically died. Um, they stopped being able to really hold decent charge. Uh, and we saw very quickly that they were failing. So we decided that we needed to replace them all. So that brings us to our new system. So now we have our brand new lithium batteries. So I'm gonna use blue to represent our brand new lithium batteries. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've actually added two additional batteries for more storage. We still have a starter battery, but we've now moved over to a AGM battery. So AGM is more uh, efficient, uh, it'll last longer, and generally speaking, easier to maintain than our flood cell batteries. So we still have the same thing over here that we had before. We have our negative bus going to the rest of the system. So on the negative terminals of all of these, We still wire all of our um, lithium batteries together, and then we send them over to negative bus, and the starter battery, of course, also goes over to negative bus, so it can connect it to the rest of the system. So from our engine, which is over here, we have the same setup where the starter battery will be connected to the engine's starter, and the engine's alternator. Uh, but we have one issue here where um, the, the main difference we're going to have is that 
because lithium batteries have their own internal battery management system, if they connect directly to the alternator and they're part of that circuit, um, it's possible that a lithium battery will just uh, stop receiving new voltage because they have internal systems that actually control how much voltage they receive. If that happens, basically the voltage that was going to them can go backwards basically and break the diodes that are within the alternator and ruin the alternator. So what we're gonna do is remove the ACR and instead install um, something new called a DC to DC charger. Uh, the wiring for this is actually very similar to what we had before. So instead of wiring to the ACR, which we're going to remove from the system, the starter battery wires into the DC to DC charger. Uh, we actually will have two DC to DC chargers because uh, the amperage is actually pretty high coming off our alternator. So there should be two of these here. So we're going to wire these in parallel. The outputs from these, so these will detect that the alternator is on. Um, and the way that they'll detect that the alternator is on is we'll actually connect the uh, ignition switch of the um, ignition switch of the uh, engine over to these. So when the ignition switch is on, that means the engine is running. That means we know the alternator is running. That means we know that we should send power from the DC to DC chargers over to our battery bank. So now our AGM will uh, push power, instead of being as part of the circuit, the AGM will push power into these, uh, the ignition switch will detect that and send power to our lithium batteries. So once you do this, connect all these guys up. These will all be similar to old system, all in parallel. And the output of this will go over to our um, house battery bank. So same as before, We'll have things coming in here and power will be sent over to them. And so the main changes that we're making will be uh, changing out each one of these batteries to be lithium, changing out this to be AGM, installing our DC to DC chargers and setting up the ignition switch to go to the um, DC to DC chargers. So yeah, we are... Uh... We're taking off the last battery, just so I can get a feeling for, I've already documented what it's connected to. So I'm gonna take it off, take off its connection to the battery next to it, and then see if we can actually get it out of here. Cause if we can't get them out, then <laughs> doing all this is kind of pointless. But at least this one, I know how it's wired. I know how I could, I could rewire it if I needed to. So I'm doing that now. We've got all the lithium batteries in. We've installed all of the Victron equipment to make it work the way that we've talked about. One of the things we did as well was install something called a Serbo GX, which is basically kind of a central system on the boat that has all of the uh, wires from all of our Victron equipment coming in, uh, has our battery monitor hooked up to it, and a touch screen attached. So over here, we have a screen that shows uh, the overall current state of our system. So we have our uh, AC loads, which is six watts right now, very little. 
our inverter is not doing anything because there's very little load on the system. Uh, we can see the number of watts coming in from our solar panel and you can see that flowing over here to our battery uh, and slowly recharging the battery. It's been a very interesting week this week and while the thing that happened was a little scary and a little out of control, you know, I think we were really proud because we felt that we handled the situation well, it happened in a very safe place and everything's been fixed. Um, basically, we are on our way to finishing up getting our propeller fixed up and the only, we have to piece, wait for one uh, piece, which is the coupling and once it comes in in a few days, we should actually be good to go. So we're actually prepping her up to be splashed again and this week has been sort of a hidden blessing because we had this crazy thing happen and we were, you know, then some other crazy things happened that led to a huge lithium build early, a year earlier than we expected to. But the thing that we didn't expect was the socialization that we had a chance to do. We made a ton of friends this weekend, this week, I should say, and it has been amazing. We have had dinner with people for the first time and I think in two years. I've gone, you know, like we're going over to someone's house and actually having dinner and having drinks with people on their boat and just listening and talking to people about all of our issues and sort of everything being put in perspective. Talking to people who've been doing this for decades longer than we have it has been so eye-opening because the things that we thought we were messing up so normal so part of the learning process and it's been very nice to hear sort of other people's horror stories because you know you don't know and you're doing some things on your own you're doing these things um, by yourselves or just the two of us you don't realize the thing that you messed up wasn't really a big deal it feels like a big deal to us but when you talk to people who have a lot more experience, they're like, oh yeah, wait till you hear what I did. And so it's been, it's been really, really nice. The big thing, other thing that this week has given us a chance to do is work on a bunch of little projects that needed to get done, but we were just going to try to do them on the water on our way up or Rhode Island. And it worked out really well. Uh, for example, the dinghy. So the dinghy had holes in it and it's our car and so we need to patch it up and so that gave us this gave us a really nice chance to lower it down and to basically take care of it in a very nice environment rather than sort of balancing on the back of the boat trying to get it done i can't wait for us to be splashed in a few days and for us to finally start going up north but I wouldn't give this week up for anything. It was a little uncomfortable. There were a few days and a few nights that just felt, you know, a little difficult, but the people we've met and the friends we've made this week have been just amazing. You know, not just, just for socialization, but for the help. We've had people lend us their cars to go shopping or do whatever we want. We've had multiple offers on a variety of things, whatever we may need. And especially even the boatyard has been so amazing to kind of help us have a comfortable experience through what was, you know, an unexpected surprise. But it's, uh, yeah, it's gonna be an awesome journey and I'm, I'm really excited, but this week has also has been totally worth it.